Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to demonstrate experiment 1, capacity. At the end of this video, you should be able to determine first, the time constant of an RC circuit, second, the capacitance of a capacitor using an RC circuit. The total charge Q on each plate of a capacitor during the charging and discharging processes varies with time t as shown in figure 1.1. During the charging process, refer to equation 1.1. During the discharging process, refer to equation 1.2 where Q0 is the initial amount of charge stored in a capacitor, Q is the amount of charge at time T, R is the resistance of a resistor, C is the capacitance of a capacitor, and tau equals to RC is the time constant. During discharging, the magnitude of the current I varies with time as shown in figure 1.2. From equation 1.2, the magnitude of the discharge current is I equals to negative I0 E to the power of negative T over RC. We refer this as equation 1.3. Evidently, at time T equals tau, the magnitude of the discharge current is 0.37 I0. The negative sign shows the current flow in opposite direction to that of the current flow during the charging process. During charging, time constant tau is defined as the time required for the capacitor to reach 0.63 or 63% of its maximum charge. During discharging, time constant tau is defined as the time required for the charge on the capacitor to decrease to 0.37 or 37% of its initial value. From the graph of I against T, the experimental value of time constant tau of the RC circuit is determined by the definition when the current is 0.37 I0. Whereas, the theoretical value of time constant tau can be calculated by using equation tau equals to RC. Compare the theoretical value and experimental value of time constant tau. The experimental value of C1 and C2 can be determined from the equation of C equals to tau over R. The apparatus needed are a DC power supply, a 100 kilo ohms resistor, two capacitor labeled C1 and C2 in the range of 470 until 1000 microfarad, a stopwatch, a switch, a DC micro emitter, and connecting wire. Now, set up the circuit. First, connect the power supply from the positive terminal to the switch. Make sure the switch is open. Then, connect the connecting wire from the other side of the switch to the positive terminal of C1. Next, connect the negative terminal of C1 to the negative terminal of the power supply. Take a micro emitter and connect its positive side to the positive terminal of C1. Connect the negative side of the microemitter to a resistor.
Lastly, complete the circuit by connecting the other side of the resistor to the negative terminal of C1. Now, turn on the power supply in the range of 4 to 6 volts. Close switch S. Read the microemitter and record the reading for I. Open switch S and short circuit the capacitor using a connecting wire so that the capacitor is fully discharged. Close switch S again to charge the capacitor so that the microemitter reading is back to I node. Simultaneously, open switch S and start the stopwatch to measure the time T of discharging process. Get at least 6 to 8 pairs of current I and time T readings throughout the discharging process until the current is about 0.05 I know. For part B, the same circuit is used as in part A. Take C2 and connect it in parallel with C1 in the same circuit. Repeat step 9 up until 13 to obtain the readings of the microemitter I prime and the stopwatch T prime. Tabulate your data for part A and part B. You may pause the video and complete the table. Next, write your full lab report. Give comments about your experimental results and compare it with the standard value. Don't forget to state the source of error and the precaution taken to overcome them. Lastly, write the conclusion of your experiment. If you have any questions, write a comment below and I will try my best to answer them. Thank you for watching.